Hello, I'm Philip Duncan from Weather Watch TV on YouTube with a special update on Tropical Cyclone Fina as it heads directly towards Darwin on Saturday. Here is the latest satellite map and the rain radar. We'll start with the radar. That's the area here in green, bit of yellow sort of showing up with the heaviest of the falls. The reason why the radar is important is because you can actually see the spinning center of it here. You can kind of see that green part going around in a circle. And so that is the center of the storm. Now, when you overlay it with the satellite imagery, which you see here in the other colors, the yellows, the reds, but more importantly, the white and the black part right in the center, because that shows the biggest of the clouds. And what you'll notice is the center of the storm is, is here, but the worst of the rain is to the north or northwest. So that means that the storm is lopsided a bit at the moment. And that's quite normal when it's down around the category one, category two area, that's quite normal. But it means that the exact tracking of the center of the storm does matter quite a lot. Sometimes it sort of doesn't matter too much if it's 50 kilometers here or there, it could still, you know, it's still gonna hit a lot of people. But in this case, if it does move a little further to the west, that could really reduce the rainfall. The problem is, We've got various computer models saying different things. Normally they align quite nicely the day before, but this one, they're not really doing that as well as I've seen with other storm systems this year. So that just make, makes it a little bit harder to lock in the details about the severe weather. So you go a bit more general and just say what the, what the risks are. So that's what we'll be doing in this video. So here is the tracking from the Joint Typhoon Warning Center, that's the Americans, coming from the west of the last few days, and then it's curving around. This is where it is now, curving around and starting to track southwestwards towards the Kimberley. If you take a look here at the Bureau of Meteorology's tracking, it was category two yesterday, it's dropped back to category one overnight. Back to two again, probably later today, and might even get to category three once it leaves Darwin and heads towards a very remote part of the Kimberley. So the, the category one, two part, you know, it's, it's like driving a car in a 100 kilometer an hour speed zone and you're doing 90 instead of 100, right? You're still basically getting pretty much at the speed limit, but not quite. So that is, that's what we're seeing here. You know, the difference between a, a weak category two and a strong category one may only be a few kilometers an hour difference, but obviously there's a threshold that you have to get to. So it's dropped below the category two threshold this morning, may well pick back up again. In other words, it's not falling apart may not be powering up a huge amount either, but it's not going away, it's not falling apart. Some people think that when they see the number go backwards. Here is the wind map for this evening. So the storm is still offshore, although very close to the mainland and close to the islands north of Darwin. Windiest of the weather, still mostly um, well away from Darwin as we go through Friday. You might notice an easterly wind starting to pick up as it comes in, uh, but that may not arrive until later on this evening. Here is tonight's map. So going into 9.30 tonight, Darwin time. So on this map shows rainfall and the animated part shows the wind. So the rain is heavy, as I mentioned before, in the northern part of the tropical cyclone, not as much in the southern part. And you can see that because the color shading to the north there shows 200, 300 millimeters falling in just 24 hours, whereas the southeast quadrant shows, you know, 60 to 80 millimeters. Now, on top of the rain that's coming through as we go into tonight, there are thunderstorms. So this is lunchtime tomorrow, Saturday. Severe thunderstorm risk covering quite a few populated places. So it's not just Darwin, but outside of that. And sometimes with tropical cyclones, when you get severe thunderstorms, they can produce their own pocket of damage that may be worse than the cyclone itself for some people. So you need to keep a real, uh, very close eye on the rain radar and keep up to date with the Bureau of Meteorology tracking any severe thunderstorms on top of the uh, tropical cyclone itself. Now the modeling with this storm, as I say, they're not perfectly aligned at the moment. Now they show somewhat of a similar track and they certainly show similar strength. So we've kind of got that locked down, but what we don't have locked down is the precise placement of the storm or the timing of it once it goes past Darwin, and this is an example of it. So here we are, 3.30 Saturday afternoon, the uh, static map here, that is the American modeling, the animated one to the east, that's the European modeling. There is a bit of difference here because under this setup, that's a damaging northerly wind coming into Darwin, uh, but on the European setup, it would be a strong southerly coming in. So opposite wind directions because of the center of the storm being in two different areas with this map. So that means that the American model is showing it coming in earlier. European one shows it coming in later. And also the European model has it just a little bit further eastwards than the American one, which means more of that heavy rain could come into Darwin and further, further inland as well. So that's why 
you need to monitor this a bit more closely going into tomorrow. Again, this shows the two different setups as you go in towards midnight. You know, just after Saturday midnight, going into the early hours of Sunday morning, the American model shows the storm moving away from Darwin by then. Wind easing, uh, humidity up, rain falling still, but the wind gone. But the European modeling shows the storm smack bang over the top of Darwin at that point in time. So there's going to be movement. And if you're wondering what the, uh, what the Australian modeling is, is saying, it's picking the low out here well to the northwest more than all of the other models are doing. So we've got to probably wait another day still, or even just to the end of today, to try and really work out exactly who is most exposed. And so but when it's like that, you just basically say everyone here in the Darwin region is exposed to it. So let's take a look at the timing a bit more. Here is the 6.30 in the morning, highlighted in the green there, 6.30 in the morning, Saturday morning. So we're, we're going back a bit in time again. We just showed you Sunday morning. This is the wind map though. So based on this map showing American modeling, worst of those winds on Saturday morning are just starting to push into Darwin now. Southeasterly winds turning easterly and then northeasterly as that tracks on by. So that's 6.30 in the morning. This is 6.30 in the evening with the red highlighted there. That's the European modeling, 12 hours later. Uh, so that is quite a lot of time when you're only a day or so away from this arriving. And that means that there is uncertainty about the exact um, forces in the atmosphere that are guiding the storm along in the, in the southwesterly direction. So there is a bit of uncertainty there, but either way, both models show damaging winds coming through the Darwin area across Saturday and some very heavy rain in there as well. So let me just try and make sense of the tracking. So this is where we are for this evening. This is the tracking from Friday through till Tuesday. Pretty quick animation, so I'll just show it to you now. And you can see it passing through there. This is, by the way, the uh, American models, uh, modeling. And it does show category three at this point. Then it starts to make landfall, we expect, in a remote part of the Kimberley. So hopefully once it leaves Darwin, it doesn't really pose too much of a threat if you're in the uh, Kimberley area, but there could be some very heavy rain dangerous seas as well. And we'll have to, again, wait a little bit more time to track where that is going. So that is all from me for today on Tropical Cyclone FINA. I'm gonna be back again on Saturday because as you can see, still a few more questions that need to be answered. And so probably uh, we'll get a video update early on Saturday for you. No matter which model is accurate, it does look as though it's going into the Saturday afternoon period where maybe that severe weather is most likely, but tropical cyclones can speed up. They can slow down, um, they can be guided by other systems, so it is not just a you know, perfect straight line and it's easy to do. Um, sometimes these, these cyclones can be a little bit tricky and this is certainly one of them. It's good to see that it's at the lower end for now though, that is better news. It means it's perhaps more of a rain event than a wind event, but as you just saw, there are going to be some damaging winds passing around, over 100 to 150 kilometers an hour possible. And I can't stress enough, go to the Bureau of Meteorology for all the official warnings here on Tropical Cyclone FINA. That is all from me for this Friday. I will see you again tomorrow Saturday with our next update on Tropical Cyclone FINA. We'll see you then.